In this video, I'm going to show you how to compile your app with PhoneGap and get it ready to upload to the iOS and Android app stores. So this is the process that you will do after you've already built your app in WordPress and you want to compile it and get it ready for release. So once you first you will basically go through our other videos and install everything in WordPress and get your AppPressor app ready to go and then you will go on to this step once you're finished with that. So the first thing you need to do is log into our web, your account page on our website and download the build files and that is going to look something like this once you open it up and basically it'll be a folder um, it might be called PG build it might be called something else but uh, basically it's going to be a folder with some other folders in it and I'm going to show you what you're going to do with this to actually build the app so the first thing that we're going to do is go into the www folder and you'll see that this has a few different files in here and this is kind of like a web a static website but you'll see like an index.html file um, and then there's some there's an image icon and then if you go into this res folder there are um, some other icons which are for the splash screen and the actual icon um, on which is going to be on your device so I'll go over those in a bit but the first thing we want to do is open up this config.xml file because that's where most of the magic is going to happen so I'm just going to go ahead and open that up in a text editor and we're going to see um, we have a bunch of kind of different code here and I'm just going to go through it with you you only need to make a few edits to it the first edit we're going to make is um, right here your app ID you need to change this to be something unique so it's just a reverse domain so um, basically I've just com.example.myapp so this could be com. you know appressor. Dot, um, shop or it could be you know com. your site. Dot, your app and it's not real important how you do it but just make sure that that is in this um, format and the actual name of it just make sure that you are uh, remember this that's that's the most important thing and also the version you can probably leave this but that is going to be used later as well um, go ahead and give your app a name um, you know call it shop whatever description you can write like a sentence or two here about what your app does um, and then here you're going to actually just change this to your website and then this obviously changed to your email and then your company here so once you have all those the next thing we're going to do, um, just go through these preference tags with you. If you want to change the PhoneGap version, for instance, you may be watching this video and PhoneGap has advanced to a later version besides 3.3. You want to do 3.4, 3.5, whatever it is. You can change that here, um, or you can remove the tag altogether and it will use the default PhoneGap build version. So that is up to you. Um, but as of the taping of this video, 3.3 is our recommended version. Um, this minimum and Android SDK tag is for saying basically that Android 4.0 is the minimum that is supported. If you change this um, and you want to support 2.3 or um, you know older devices, just uh, keep in mind that AppPressor does not support anything under Android 4.0 officially, so you may have to tweak some stuff. Um, you can leave this device tag. Now all of these right here are basically different plugins that we're using for PhoneGap build. So you want to make sure you want to leave device, um, camera, media capture, all this stuff right here is for the camera plugin. So if you're using the camera plugin at all or, or the app camera extension, you want to leave all those. If not, you can take them out. Um, the splash screen, you want to leave that. And then contacts, geolocation, if you if you don't want access to the contacts at all or you don't want access to geolocation, uh, feel free to take these out. Um, I would leave in-app browser and dialogues. Uh, I would definitely leave network information and um, vibration. It's up to you. Uh, but basically, if you don't know what to do, just leave all this. Don't touch it. Um, 
So uh, if you don't want push, this one's for push notifications, you can take that out. The status bar plugin is actually for um, iOS 7 has a problem with displaying the app on top of that little bar that has like your carrier and your battery and all that kind of stuff. So this actually fixes it. This line right here and uh, this line right here. Um, you'll want to leave all these the same. And unless you really know what you're doing, then you can you can change stuff. But basically, if you don't if you don't know what's going on, if you're a little confused or something, just leave all this stuff. Don't don't touch it. Um, the rest of this stuff you don't need to do anything with. This is all just saying where the files, the image files for the splash screen and the icons are located. And then um, we're having the content source and everything. So the old way we used to do is change this content source URL to your website. We're not doing that anymore. Uh, the newer way is faster. So leave this on index.html and then I'm going to show you the next step. So you can go ahead and save that once you've made your changes. Then we're going to open up index.html. It, it, uh, this is basically just a static web, web page that is the first thing that's going to open up in your app and instead of showing uh, the static web page we're going to redirect to your website so uh, whatever your website is um, you want to put that there and then have our query string of a p p p equals one and that is how we switch out the uh, theme for your app and do other app press related things so um, it, it, it may look, the, the document may look slightly different than this. Um, we may add some stuff to it, but the essentially you want to change this window.location redirect to be your website, even if there's some other code up here. Um, and then go ahead and save that. Then the last thing that you're going to do um, is change out the images. So you have this icon.png file, and then in this folder you have a bunch of um, you have all the Android splash screen images, and then you have all the iOS splash screen images. You have all of the icon images. So you do actually have to go in here and change these all out to be your um, your actual you know logo or whatever you want your splash screen to be. So what I usually do is just drag these into Photoshop, leave the name the same, leave the uh, size and everything the same, just copy over them with your image uh, for all of them. So once you've done that, um, what you're going to do is just zip this file and then we're going to upload it to PhoneGap Build. So I just compress the www folder. Don't, you, don't do anything with any of these folders. That is for testing, which I'm going to go over in another video. Um, but the next thing that we're going to do is go to build.phonegap.com, which is right here. And if you don't have an account, you can get a free account for one app. So you would click on register. In my case, I'm going to um, sign in. So once I'm signed in, you will see this big uh, blue new app button. Go ahead and click that. And then what we're going to do is upload a zip file. So what we want to do is just find the file that we just zipped, which is this one. And I'm going to go ahead and upload it. And then you'll see that it is uploaded and it has our information um, what the app, what app we called it and everything like that. Uh, and you can click on ready to build and go ahead and build it. It is not going to build iOS because you have to actually uh, have your certificates and everything for that before it will build. But it will actually build for Android. We don't actually support Windows Phone yet even though it is building for Windows Phone. Um, but basically uh, that is it and then w in another video I go over the iOS certificates and everything to actually get it onto your phone and to, to build it through here but that's the basic process of using the build files and um, our new build process so I hope that helps and I will see you in the next video